Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode two of Lewis Bloor's Game Changers. Today, I'm introducing you to one of the nicest people that I'm lucky enough to know, the owner of Strawberries and Cream Festival in Cambridge and an all-round absolute unit. Please welcome Chris Jammer. I think we're live. <laughs> I love it. So happy birthday for the other day. Well, thank you very much, mate. Big 26. 26. Yeah. Big, big 30 this year, mate. You're yeah, uh, mate, it, was, uh, it was a good one, wasn't it? So a little bit, a little bit calmer than years gone by. I it is, mate. I think it's my first sober birthday in a decade. <laughs> and you enjoyed it? I loved it. Yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. Do you know what I did? My mate um, Gabs came down from Manchester and usually when she comes down, we just hammer it and go out but we uh booked into a positivity abundance law of attraction seminar wow on the saturday um which was my first one ever but um i mean i'm quite an extreme person i either like hammer it or i go the other way <laughs> so i genuinely think that's why me and you click straight away <laughs> yeah. one meeting because we will be we'll be talking all week like yeah you know i'm on this i'm reading this book i'm doing this and it will bump into <laughs> each other saturday night we're like hey bro <laughs> hey bro back again yeah <laughs> That's good though, man. So, so the weekend started obviously Friday, and what what happened? You went straight to the hotel, or know, when so, was the when so was I got the, the seminar, seminar on Saturday morning? Yep. Um, went there. It was like a all day thing. Um, loads of speakers. We were talking about all sorts, like um, dealing with grief and that sort of thing, and then like using sexual energy to like create, like manifest stuff you wanted. It was like very interesting, like all stuff that I've kind of heard about a little bit, but I've never really explored. So um, I've, I've in, it's interesting you say that because it's the sexual chakra. In the, yeah. book, in the book, Think and Grow Rich, they say that a man who, or you know, man or woman who, who is a slave of his uh, sexual chakra, as yeah. in constantly needs to, you know, appease that, that yeah. desire, you don't get anything done. Yeah. Whereas if you save that energy, yeah. and in Think and Grow Rich, they call it transmuting. Yes, that's so right. you're aware of that energy, you store it and yeah. you just transfer it into another area yeah. and you will start getting shit yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, you will start really getting stuff Literally, done. Literally, that's what they were saying. And it was like, because, I mean, in that book, it says about like, you need to have a real strong belief in something, but combining that with this, like transmuting the sexual energy is like the most powerful like manifestation you can have, which is, I mean, it's all a bit woo woo, but I'm so into that. No, like, no, I love it. I disagree. I think, I think there are certain raw energies in life that you will either master or they will master yeah, you. Yeah, 100%. And in, in Think and Grow Rich, it talks a lot about the fact that any great person that's ever done ha ha ever done anything kind of worthwhile yeah. is actually probably quite a horny person <laughs> that's managed to get on top of what, Completely. right? And, yeah, then, and yeah, then they're yeah. using that. Yeah, so so where, where was the seminar? So and who was it? Is it a famous speaker or is it, is it go on, tell me No, so it was, in, um, it was in Liverpool Street in like an event space um, and it was the, actually the girl's first ever one she's put together, but she's got kind of, she had like kind of six speakers through the day. They've all got their profiles and they're all like kind of known in the industry. I didn't know anything about it. It was my first one. Wow. Um, but there was like six different speakers all speaking about different things and I mate, I just came out of it and I just felt so light and like all oh, right let's let's start 26 good you know what I mean and then yeah. we checked into the spa next day um had a chilled one went white city house had some dinner and then kind of just like on Monday morning I was like wow that was a really nice birthday weekend and then yeah and then Tuesday was actually birthday supposed to go to rain reopening the boys were all ready to go. I was like, you know what, man? Pulled the plug. I pulled it. I love <laughs> I that, it. I love yeah, that, mate. I know. I think the thing is that for the rest of your life, you've now banked that special occasion. Yeah. It does, five, 10 years from now, you will look back to that and you'll have a warm feeling. Whereas, yeah. look, I don't care what club you go to, if you go out and you absolutely smash it and you hit it, you, you know, everyone gets a bit drunk. Everyone yeah. kind of has a bit of a cringe at themselves yeah. the next day. Yeah. And even if you had fun that night, you're still going to look back and think, mm, yeah. was that? I, and I, think, I think, I mean, listen, I've only, I've just got to 30 and yeah. I'm only really just starting to yeah. come. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, you yeah. know, full sobriety is obviously like a very, very powerful thing. Yeah. Like I, I was out in Thailand and I, I had a couple of drinks one night while I was out there, but I just wasn't there for that. Yeah. And I was there training. I wanted to be getting the good sleep. I wanted to be waking up. And after a few days, I just settled into this space yeah. of just, I'm just here right now. And, and it's something I'm definitely looking forward to like carrying on throughout yeah. the year. Um, but yeah, happy birthday. Welcome Thanks, to 26. Mate. What's the plans for 2020? What have we got? 2020, got a lot What's in on the store, list? man. There's a lot in store. I've kind of um, picked up a little few things on the side, but strawberries and cream obviously is my main, my main baby. It has been for a long time now. And um, this is a really game changing year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Paul, the, Paul has just done the exact same thing. And listen, yeah. I'll give you the five for later for doing that. Yeah. Um, right. Let's go back to the very beginning. Strawberries yeah. and cream festival. Yes. Let's build build the start. Build the let's 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 help everyone. Right. So strawberries and cream festival started while I was studying at Cambridge Uni. 
I come there from London, had a year off, had the best time in my year off uh, and got there and I was like, this is boring. Cambridge, if anyone's been there, is like a little quiet city, not much going on. Like the uni light is go out, listen to ABBA and some Britney Spears, get trashed and go home. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. We, should, we, should we go Cambridge next <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good once in a while, but like week in, oh. week out. So I was like, right, something's missing here. The whole grime thing in London was kind of popping off at the time and I had not reached Cambridge at all. So we started off a few club nights, um, me and two mates. And yeah, it kind of like grown, grew in popularity. So we started our first, our first strawberries and cream was a little garden party in a big country estate. We decided that we were gonna go under the pretense that we were a Cambridge Medical Society. So we'd get given the land. So we were like, yeah, it's our garden party for the Medic Society. And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure, have my, have my garden, have my house. <laughs> Uh, so we rocked up, put a big stage in, put shy effects on David Rodigan and tore it up. And I was the most messy person on the field for about a thousand. It was about a thousand people that one. And so second, first one, I mean, you, you you built up a bit of a following through the club nights because yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you were the only one offering what you were offering yeah, in exactly. the area at the time. So what was the owner saying after Geese? Did uh, you have to speak to him? Or did you have yeah, to I mean, deposit we, down? Or? I mean, we paid him. We didn't get invited back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no wonder. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, it was lucky because... We didn't have any investment or anything. We've done this all like completely ourselves the whole way through. So we, off the back of the club nights, we were like, yeah, we're doing this event at this really cool venue, like buy tickets. And mm. with that money, then we booked tax. We like paid for the venue. Like it was all a bit fire festively in the, at the beginning. Wow. But it was, it was on a small scale. So we kind of, yeah, it was lucky, man. We, and, and since then we've kind of grown year on year. I've booked like the likes of Skepta, Kano, Wiley, j Huss, Octavian, D-Block Europe, uh, anyone in that urban space kind of we've, been lucky enough to get just as they've come up on the come up yeah. um, and just being clever with our bookings because we can't I can't afford to book who's popping right now but we're clever with who's got m got music coming who's kind of bubbling in the underground scene and then by the time they play the festival in a few months time they're kind of just on top so so you're so you're actually catching people as that wave is starting to break yeah. for them yeah, yeah so yeah. they're appreciating being exactly. there that, that, that could very well be the first big festival for real yeah because as much as w when you talk about being a big festival I mean look you know, you've got the likes of Glastonbury, what was, you know, used to be V Festival. These are mega, mm. but you are well on your way there, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, hopefully we're going to, we, we're getting to a level where we're kind of, we're in the mix now of, of mainstays on the festival circuit. But yeah, there's a lot of artists that have played played their first festival with us. Like, for example, H, I think, played two years ago. First one? Yeah. Wow. Um, Octavian. Mate, he's everywhere now. Um, I don't want to radio all the time. Yeah, I know. J Huss, we, we got him the week after he played his first one at Part Life. Wow. Um, yeah, man, I, I mean, that's, that's just the way we've grown it. It's like staying true to like the underground stuff and just kind of having it cool and credible, but also accessible to like the mainstream and the Cambridge market that's slightly a little bit behind London. <laughs> I, think it, I think it's crazy because I feel like one of the best ways, if you're into music and you're doing promotion, that's got to be one of the most fulfilling days. I mean, once you turn up, because I know you spend a lot of time on site before, you've been in Cambridge today looking at a new site, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you spend all that time there. By the time the day comes, is it, are you, it's like, you know when you have a house party at your own gaff and everyone's there having a great time, apart from you, because yeah. you're fuming, everyone's yeah. messing up the gaff. Yeah. Is it almost like you get stressed out a little yeah, bit? Yeah, oh mate, honestly. The are you day, better being sober or are you better like I, getting I stuck to, in? I have to have a few beers actually to like level me out because I'm very stressed on the day. It's, it is a bit of a nightmare. Um, anyone that knows me or has seen me there has been like, you always look so stressed. And I am because like, I never really appreciate what I actually have done until the day after when I look at the pictures and see yeah. like people's comments and everything, because there's always stuff behind the scenes and events you probably know that's just like, that's not going as, as I wanted it to. Yeah. And, have, and like managing that expectation internally is always difficult, but the days and weeks afterwards are just like, this is what I work all year for, um, just to see how people have reacted to what I've put on. I feel like it's probably one of the, in, in my opinion, you've got to be creative you've got to be business minded you've got to be disciplined in the fact that you're working all year round especially yeah. now yeah. on one or two days right yeah. i mean is it two days at the minute or one strawberries and cream is one day and i've got another festival the day after called the cambridge club yeah which yeah it's different but it's yeah, a little bit more family based yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. Family um family. I love it, man. I've not been yet. Last yeah. last year when you were doing it, I was in a I was in a sober period yes. and I was trying to take my time and yeah, I was yeah. heartbroken because every you know so many people I know was yeah. going. Um, and the funny thing is, I first heard about you. I told you this right years ago. One of my my mum or one of my mum's mates said to me, 
do you know this guy Chris? Like, I think I was on tower. I was still, you know, getting about the scene a little bit. And it was like, do you know this guy Chris? Yeah. We're going to this strawberries in Cream Festival. I love that. It's like, no, no, never heard of it. Never heard of it. And then years later, we're like, I know. Do you <laughs> time, bro? I love it, man. It's brilliant. <laughs> like, this year, I'll make my debut, man. Yeah, make sure and cream. put a little throne on the stage for you, mate. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. No, I'm all over it. So I feel like this year for me, one thing that I've said is that I've got so much work to do this year that I want to make sure that I'm on top of it. I'm doing work that I love doing. Yeah. I've got the podcast, um, a couple of other projects that are on the boil as well. And I want to be in a completely good space and just able to handle all of the little pressures that come with it. 100%. So I've said no bad food until day 100, which I think is April 19th. Is and, it? and no any kind of drink or, you know, yeah, yeah, any, yeah. whatever until day 200, which I think really? is, yep, un- which I think is July. It's either, no, April 10th is day 100 and July 19th, which is a Sunday, is day 200. Blimey, it's fair when, play. When's the festival? Oh, uh, you, you're going to miss it. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, on the 20th shit. of June. I might, I, might, I might take a day and then add <laughs> it on at the end. Mate, do you know what? I, I mean, on that, on that note, I think I have had the best start to a year that I've ever had. I like, it, everything is just, I'm so productive. Like, just, just not having the hangover. Or like having the time on the weekends to do little bits and bobs that you kind of got going on the side outside your day job. It's just like, it's been so <laughs> game changing. Shut <laughs> up. You are just... <laughs> I swear to God, we have not, we have not asked promise, him to I do promise. this, man. He's just, he's loving it. Well, I'm, I know that you are, you're a very wanted man in the sense that you've got your finger in a lot of pies. You're, you are one of the most lovable geezers I've, I've ever met. And, you, and like I said on your birthday post, you're kind, hilarious, and you're a savage. <laughs> a savage. So you've got a lot of mates and you've constantly got people inviting yeah. you out. And I always, I'm always checking on you. I'm always yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. I know you're hitting it. Make yeah. sure you're getting up the next day and yeah. enjoying it. So you, you feel in a good place. Yeah, you're I on top of things. Place. I think routine's been so key, man. It's like, I'm getting up earlier than I've ever got up before just to get the gym out of the way and get the routine in. But like, it's just, it's a case of just being able to say no to stuff. Like last year I did say yes to everything and like I was pleasing everyone else, but not pleasing myself. And like getting that switch, I think is really key for me this year. Just like, I've got to come first in a lot of time because I weren't, I was, I love what I do. And I, I like, my job is, is, is my dream, but I wasn't actually fully happy. And I think that pleasing myself before I was trying to please others is, is like a key thing for me to go forward next year. Yeah. But, um, I think it's important and it's like learning to say no is so powerful yeah. because first of all, all the parties are going to be there. That, you know, yeah. I mean, unless you're talking a festival, it's one day, one yeah, day yeah, a year. Yeah, but yeah. all the normal, you know, listen, we live in London. We like going out. There's a big scene in London. But all those parties that happen that people are like, oh, you know, you're going to come this one. Like there was Halloween. There was a big one. And I'm just like, at the minute, I'm just like, it's always going to be a yeah, next one. It is. So I want to get myself. And I feel like that's kind of fair. You give yourself 200 days out of 365. Yeah. Might go and have a little holiday to, you know, I'd be for a bus, yeah, like, yeah. a couple of days, Let me know. back to it, you know, <laughs> back to the grind. Um, but yeah, it's good to see you doing so well. You know, I always like to keep in touch with you and I always like to know that you're maximising your opportunity because yeah. you've, because it's not, it's not all been sunshine and roses. You've nah. had some, you've had some real challenges. Yeah. And I remember, we've always got along, we've always, we've always been pals, but I remember one time we was in the car, we was driving somewhere and we started having a little bit of a chat. And I, and one thing that I feel like we clicked on is that we've both seen our own growth in struggle from yeah. things that have happened in our life 100%. and you do a lot of charity work that's yeah. something that connects towards that yeah so um you went to china last year so yeah i went to china i did the great wall um and raised some money for a charity called grief encounter and they basically um support bereaved children who've lost parents or family members at a young age because like the government don't actually fund counseling for that and i think they helped me out a lot when i was i lost my grandparents at like 18 um so i used that charity then and then i lost my mum how long ago is it now? 18 months or so wow. um, to cancer. And I mean, I just used that opportunity kind of just to, I, I mean, you go through grief and you go through pain, but sometimes you just got to take that energy and use it in a positive way. And I think I've, all I've done since my mom's passed away is trying to use that, that part of my life to kind of do better. So this charity um, war came along and I was like, yeah, let me be an ambassador. I'll try and do some bits with, bits and bobs with them and raise a lot of money for it. So yeah, harnessing that, that negative energy and turning it into a positive is something I'm very passionate about doing. I'm proud of. I mean, you know, first of all, rest in peace. And second, I'm sure that she would be unbelievably proud <laughs> of so. the man <laughs> the man that you've, you've become. Yeah. You, are, you are genuinely one of the most, you know, nicest and like you've got all the opportunities in front of you. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm proud of you. Yeah, I love thanks, bro. Pieces. Thanks, bro. So um, 
So the charity grief encounter, is there any advice you can give to people about how to get in contact, how they can benefit from reaching out if they're feeling in a place where they can't? Yeah. Is there anything you want to... So um, some of the money we raise has gone towards like a 24-hour helpline. So they're online to basically anyone that wants to have a chat um, all all the time now, So um, which is actually not a, assist, not a facility available before. So um, yeah, just go Google them, um, call them up there. They're, they're great people. A lot of the a lot of the counselors came on the trip with us as well. So there was a lot of therapy on this trip for me personally yeah, as well. In a way, it was just like walking along this massive wall that goes on forever and ever, and just like being able to talk about pain and grief and like how you can handle that and how you deal with it. And like some people, yeah, it can get you down into a bad place. But I think, I mean, I don't think you can ever really appreciate the best bits of life if you don't realize how bad it can can get. Yeah. Um, so like the, the highs and lows are just part of the journey, and like you need to just be able to ride those low bits out because the high bit's going to be so much there's, better. There's something that I'd heard very, very recently and I don't know where I catch all these bits of information. Probably fucking Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> yeah, you know what course. I mean? Yeah, I was, I was reading the complete works <laughs> of Plato. No, bollocks. I'm probably just scrolling through yeah, Facebook late at night. Quote. But they say that a, a child can't grow into, into an adult without struggle. A, a, mm. An adult without struggle is, is still a child. Yeah. And I feel like that's that's important. 100%. To, you know, and everyone does go through things, but just, just again, just to see how, how you are, just your general demeanour. You are you are a ray of sunshine oh. on often an otherwise cloudy day, Chris. Oh, so stop I it. Actually, you, sir, are a game changer. You, sir, are a game changer. Um, well, look, you know, like we, we've got so much to go through um, you know again the fact that you are doing so well with, with the festival while lo looking after yourself and, and, yeah. and stuff too is something that I, I am all about I absolutely love doing that um, so talk to me now about DJing because I yes. know this is something you've embarked on yeah. this is something that I've dealt with yes. and I've had to put it to the side for the minute because yeah. I was getting a little bit too carried away with the club nights yeah. and I w it was getting in the way of the things that I wanted to do and progress you know I, I wish I'd learned when I was 21, 22 I started learning when I was 20 26, 27. Yeah, it as well. yeah, and it's like, for me, I would often go to the club and be very anxious. So I need to have a drink. Yeah, hear that. Have one more. Yeah. Because you're going, you know, if you're getting booked out and you're going places a lot, you're going alone a lot of the time. Yeah. And um, so that's something definitely to watch out for while you are DJ. Yes. No one wants to see a DJ drunker than them. No, I know. That's, that's, so, <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> I've seen many of them in my time. But, um, <laughs> I mean, the DJ thing kind of made a lot of sense, man. So like, kind of off the back of, back of shipwreck, like my profile grew a little bit and I was getting invited to all these events. I was looking at the DJ, I was like, well, I could be doing this. Like the festival, I, I, I know my music. I love the music. And like the festival has given me this, this air of credibility about my music choice. So why not marry the two together and, and kind of learn to DJ and, and make some money on the side. And also it's a really good hobby, man. Like if you've got decks at home, you know, you just come back and just zone into the music. And just like, well, that's, well, that's one of the things that I found it really, it, first of all, it's like learning another language. You really need to put yeah. a lot of time yeah, into yeah. doing it. Um, and it is something that providing you approach it in the right way, yeah. you can have a creative outlet. You can shut off all, all the outside world. And, and it's something that I absolutely love. And once you learn it, it's like riding a bike. Exactly. But it does go hand in hand with the drink. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, all the other stuff that happens in clubs. And you've got to make sure that if you're doing it and you're doing it for the right reasons, yeah. then then it will be something that stays with you for life. Yeah. For me, I, I would just get a little bit carried away with my anxiety and mm. then I'd have to have a drink. I'd feel a little bit more kind of comfortable doing it and I just had to put it to one side. Yeah. I still love to do it and it's something I may come back to. One thing I might start doing this year is just doing some mixes, like yeah, not going to clubs, out. but just putting them out. Like yeah. we, late, later on in the show, we've got... Um, He's not confirmed yet, but he should be soon. Uh, he should he should be soon. Yeah. Archie Hamilton. Oh, see. We're speaking to his people about coming on. He yeah. said that he's happy to do it. Speaking to his people about coming on. Uh, Rossi. Rossi's going to oh, be coming amazing. on when he gets back from Bali as well. He's living out there. Um, so we've just we've got a lot of people coming onto the show that I can't wait to speak to and see how they deal with it. Yeah. Like it's one thing to go out DJing once every couple of weeks, you know, once a month. These guys are DJing a couple shows a night, man. 35 days on the spin. Yeah, it's mad. Geeks. I, I can't, I, for me, and that's why I kind of stopped because I thought, right, if I carry on this, carry on with this and I really start putting my heart and soul into it, where's it going to lead yeah. me? And it's going to lead me to a place where I'm out in clubs a lot and, you know, I can hold my hand up yeah. and say that I'm not the most disciplined person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm either sober, completely looking after myself yeah. on top of things or if I have a drink, yeah, yeah, bomb, yeah. then, then I go crazy. So I just knew, if I carry on with this road, so I thought, right, I'm better off putting my attention into other yeah. things. But, um, but yeah, that's one of the things we're going to be talking about on the podcast. These musicians, DJs, yeah, yeah. how they kind of handle it. But uh, how they kind I of think on that, it. on the DJ front, like, I'm not looking to be the next coolest house DJ right. or in a club setting. Really, right. I'm looking to do like 
the little events, the fashion week parties, you know, they're like the, the, the event branded parties where like I was getting invited to anyway, but I could just charge more money if I was a DJ. Cool. So like, I'm not like trying to, I, I think I've got, a, I've got to kind of have that, like, that break because I know I'm not, I'm not disciplined when it comes to going out. Are you so, playing, yeah. are you going to play at Strawberries and Cream? I am playing at Strawberries and Cream. Oh yeah, mate, I'm going to do a set, man. Mate, I'm bringing, early, I'm bringing my doors. USB. I'm bringing my <laughs> yeah, USB gigs. I'm jumping on, mate. I'm jumping on, man. I'm down for it. Um, so what's, what's, what's happening the rest of this year then? Have you got much plans moving forward or is it just focusing on strawberries and cream from now? Um, I think with, with strawberries and cream, there's actually a hell of a lot in the pipeline. I can't quite disclose just yet, but it has... Oh, I know, I'm in this. He's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I've basically got um, a nice a nice deal on the table where it's going to open up a lot of doors for me. And I think it's strawberries and cream is going to become a brand which isn't just the one day in Cambridge. It's going to be... Uh, all over the place. I'm, I want to do merch. I want to do more private events. I want to be, I want to go international with it, man. So like, wow. um, I've got a big five year plan for it. And I think I'm taking it day to day, but so can you not tell us about which countries you're looking uh, at? Countries. I've actually got something booked in for Amsterdam um, soon. Um, March, I think. So um, I'm not going to ask you too many questions. <laughs> I'm not going to get you in but trouble. My, my vision on, on it is, is looking at doing like Dubai, um, Africa, which is very interesting to me, is like mass amount of people there that are, are the music scene's just about to touch it and explode. So I think I want to try wow. and get in there quite quickly, um, and then USA as well, hopefully. Yeah, we'll see. Well, invite me. I'll come yeah, with yeah. You. Of course, I'll come with you. I'll, I'll help out. I'll have a clipboard and an earpiece. <laughs> You'll be my standing <laughs> around you. Yep. Got that? Ticked it off. Are you the organizer? No, <laughs> I'm not the organizer. <laughs> We're front of the house, mate. Me and you. So you've asked me all about my stuff. What's going on with you for 2020? And when, and I haven't even heard like much about what's the direction for this podcast. What, the game changes. Yeah, please. the game changes that I keep plugging. Would you know about Lewis Floor's <laughs> game changes? Mate, not schemes. enough, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a project I've been working on for some time. Um, I think we've had, a, a, and it's been it's been a crescendo. It started small, a little idea. I've always wanted the chance to put my own views forward um, compared to how you know things were in the past when I've been in the media. Um, I listen to podcasts all the time and and some of the most interesting things that I've I've you know heard and, and learned in the past year have just inspired me to think do you know what I just want to do my own one um and yeah it's, it's it's serving me in the sense that I get to do something creative um, yeah. I get to use the access that I have to interesting people like you like Paul um, like the next podcast is my best mate Chris. You know, we're we're talking about maybe doing a fitness challenge team, yeah, um, and being accountable for the training that we do. Um, there's so many reasons why I wanted to do this podcast, and geez, I've I've got a profile that I don't use yeah. at all, yeah, and I run from it, yeah. You know, it kind of follows me around like a bit of a dark cloud because I, you know, through this through the show that I did, that's how I got a bit of a bad reputation, this, that, and the other, and I just like to think that my arguments and relatively normal arguments yeah. but everyone's just kind of seen them um so i've just decided to take a few years off get myself back to a place where i enjoy myself you know i'm confident about myself again and do something for for the good for the good of me for the good of my intellect my learning my understanding but using my access that i have to very interesting people like yeah. you to actually give the people who have still held on to following me yeah. after <laughs> all this time <laughs> that's why they're still yeah. following um but yeah, just to give something back. Yeah, it's you been know? a while coming though, because I remember you mentioned it to me a while ago. I'm like, yeah, Chris, I'm doing this podcast and, I, and I'd love to get you on it. And I was, I was proper chuffed because I know you know like loads of people. You said, yeah, I want you on it. And I was like, so what? What? So you're interview interviewing people that basically you want to aspire to be like, or you think other people are going to listen to and that sort of thing? It's just in, in my life, I've done a huge range of things. The reality TV was a couple of years and then there's been a huge, you know, wide spectrum of things that I've done and I've just been lucky enough to meet very very interesting people along the way from um, combat sports coaches yeah. nutritionists festival owners yeah. DJs um, venture capitalists um, and, and not only that the people that I've met go on. who's that geezer you went up to see in uh, Liverpool Vinny Shawman. Yeah, yeah, you're getting on him on. Right, he's on. He's coming in down in February. He's yeah. away in Thailand at the moment. Um, we did a hypnosis yeah. class, um, and um, I think it's something you need to do regularly. Yeah. But for the f few days after that, you know, we was talking about forgiving you. It, it, it gets you to a point. I don't believe I was out like yeah. like that, but I was definitely in a very relaxed state. Yeah. And he talked. He always talks to your subconscious, and he was telling me to 
trust yourself again, yeah. you know, forgive yourself for the mistakes of the past and trust yourself. Yeah. You know, you've got yourself to a place in life where um, you need to believe in yourself a little bit more yeah. and, and, and he's amazing, you know. Yeah. It, it, literally, when I talk to him, like the hair's on the back of my neck. Yeah. But just for example, Vinnie Shawman, you know, like absolutely amazing guy, interesting in his own right, but has also worked with some, some top flight professional yeah. combat sports uh, people and, you know, athletes, football, um, American football, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, I have I, I reached out to him because I heard him on the Joe Rogan podcast and, yeah. and Liam Harrison, who's just fought in Bangkok. Yeah. Um, and, and they've both agreed to come on the show. So I've, there's people like you who I know, who I have a relationship with as well. Yeah. Um, but there's also people coming on that, that I've not met before. Yeah. But because I've got this profile, because I'm fortunate enough yeah. and lucky enough to have been given that chance to do the reality TV, yeah. whether I enjoyed it the whole time or not, I'm here now, yeah. I've got the access. So there's people that I know and have a relationship with, and then there's people that I just think are super interesting. Yeah. I follow them on Instagram, and look, instead of just following them and liking their pictures, yeah, why not? Geez, I'm going to see if they want to come in and yeah, have a yeah, chat yeah. with Mate, me. Fair play, man. And most people that. I'm asking are going, most people, go on, grab that. <laughs> most people that I'm asking are saying yeah 100% yeah. like we've just spoken to um, we've just spoken to uh, you know the SAS Who Dares Wins yeah yeah we've got two of them two, two, really? of, them, two of those guys coming on um, I think January 31st we were recording that so that. interesting man I'm just messaging people on Instagram that I follow and I'm yeah. like hey do you want to come in and do this podcast yeah, yeah. they're like yep yeah. like it's a creative outlet it's Friday night yeah. so we're not down the pub yes mate it's win win yeah, baby it's win win so, um, so yeah I'm, I'm enjoying the fact that I've always kind of thought uh, look I, I like to think i'm a nice person yeah you are me like you said, are a nice person thanks chris <laughs> Love you too, babe. um i'm not perfect but i'm certainly nowhere near as fucking bad as i was made to be out on them yeah, on them shows the 100%. whole time and in the papers and stuff like yeah, all yeah. the time mate are, uh, look that's the story that's what they want to print uh, yeah it is am i gonna let that be the story of my life no, no fucking way fair fair play so me. um so yeah i'm here to uh I'm here to just learn yeah. and understand. It's good, man. I mean, I, I started a podcast with uh, my business partner, Priya, um, last year just to like kind of do little, little bits and bobs about it. And I'm getting on people that uh, are in the music scene and like not, may not necessarily have a voice, but you kind of know what they're... You've seen their work, but you may not know that it's them behind their work. So like producers. Producers, sick. managers, photographers, magazine owners. So like I've had Amzi on who's like this, this girl, she... she she, her energy is the most outrageous thing I've ever seen. And she, Amzi, yeah? Yeah, yeah. She, and what, is, what does she do? She shoots like um, any like UK rapper or now you worldwide rapper. She's kind of shot them. She, her images are like really unique and she's, she's incredible. And I just thought like, everyone's seen your pictures. Let's get you, let's get you a voice on there. So like, she was great. I um, had an interview with John Wolf, Wiley's manager. Really? Um, well, he's got some stories oh to tell. Oh my God. How about that all going on at the minute? Is oh he? mate, it's mad. Him and Stormzy. It all helps though. It's all it's, promotion. It's, it's everywhere. It's, it's I mean, I'm, I'm not, sure it's engineered. I'm, That's not, the, I'm not the biggest grime head yeah. you could say, but even but I it's all over the place. what's going on. I know. On, you know I, mean? I love it, man. And he, he's a, he's had some, he had some real stories on that. I bet, I'm looking to drop that. And then a geezer that, um, I'm good mates with he started the first like video content magazine online which is really cool and like he's doing loads of bits so yeah I mean the podcasts are a great way to like really express yourself and like get your opinions out there and and yeah fair play to you because the media kind of yeah did drag you through a little bit and like mm. unfairly as well man well I mean I'm not going to say that it's unfairly you do you know you if you're going to make do those actions on a public platform <laughs> you have to be held accountable yeah. but all I'm saying is I'm not saying that's not me you can't yeah, talk yeah. that I'm just saying there's other stuff as There's well, other sides, Do you know it? what I mean? I don't wake up in the morning and go, right, how can I fuck up someone's day today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, not, not every day anyway. Um, <laughs> but, um, so, uh, oh, I had something to say. Fuck, this is, this is one of the things that I'm going to have to get used to in the podcast. <laughs> letting things flow yeah. completely naturally. And, um, oh, right, that's what I was going to say. One of the things that I believe, yeah, right. So you're at a party, you're at an after party. Yeah. Bump into some geezer, some girl, you've never met them before. Just get along with them instantly. Yeah. Hour and a half later, you you've just you just come up because you've like from air from a deep and meaningful conversation. Yeah, yeah. Talking about some valid points. Yeah. But when you wake up the next day, you're like, oh man, I was busted. Like, yeah, was I talking shit yeah. or was it some good points? So there are some good points, yeah. but very rarely do we get a chance to actually be open um and in an honest environment. 100%. And like I've been to listen, mate, when, when I've had my struggles with um, you know, addiction, um, definitely partying too hard. I was never someone that would like drink every day or anything like that. But my addiction was that when I did have a drink, I'd just go absolutely yeah, potty. Yeah, yeah. So when I had problems like that, you go to support groups, you begin to understand that these groups and like, for example, the charity that you've yeah. worked with before, 
they're safe spaces. Yeah. You can say how you feel. Yeah. You can say your views and thoughts and you know things you've done and this, that, and the other in a safe environment. In my opinion, that is such a rare space with oh, your parents, mate. girlfriend, friends, whatever, yeah. work colleagues. You have to kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, if you're fortunate enough to meet someone who kind yeah. of understands exactly, like, <laughs> Shut, <yeah. laughs> you know, then then you're very very lucky, which yeah. for, which I have been very very lucky and meeting, meeting my partner. But it's a, this is a space to actually put your ideas out there, yeah. and hopefully within six months, a year, two years, like iron sharpens iron, and I just want to take all of my bullshit and polish it yeah. and make sure that actually, yeah, like I, I am a well-rounded person. Yeah. I've managed to learn and have these discussions with people. So I'm doing it for selfish reasons, but I'm also doing it because hopefully the people I can introduce people to, you know, other other people, people who listen, yeah. people who tune in can take value from it. Do you know what I mean? It's also like, like in this, this, this like one-on-one -on -one podcast setting is like, it's actually quite a rare experience you get in normal day life. It's like, not when you're worried about what's happening next or checking your phone and like actually having a discussion with someone for 45 minutes. So when, are, when, actually, when else do you actually get to do that? If of you're course. like, it's like, it's, well, it's, it's like an after party. Yeah, after yeah, in the morning. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah. So it's like, this is the time. And, you know, I'm going to make mistakes. Like, you know, there are going to be pauses. There are going to be times. I try and write some notes down. Yeah. But, you know, you're going to run out of things. And it's like, we're just having a conversation. Exactly. Like, when have me and you ever sat there and had a conversation and gone, oh, what do I say now? What do I? No, it never, it just flows, in it? Yeah. So, um, well, look, what's the time? What time are we on? Right, we've got a little bit more time. So, um, oh, we've, we've got to wrap, wrap it up. up. Right, we've Damn. got to wrap it up. Cool. Damn. It's been real. That, man. Right, one thing <laughs> that I want to do is make sure that the Game Changers, uh, Lewis Bloor's Game Changers listeners are getting value from the podcast. Yes. So I know that our lovely producer, Yasmin, has had a little conversation with you. Do you want to tell our listeners what you've got in store for them? Yeah, so I've got four VIP tickets to give away um, to oh. Strawberries and Cream this year. Um, I'm releasing the lineup in, when this when is this coming out? Uh, this is going out Monday. Is it? Yep. Uh, oh no, sorry, this one's going out Tuesday. So okay. we've got three guests in today. First one goes out Monday, second one goes out Tuesday, uh, oh, and the third one goes out Wednesday, fair enough. Oh, that's but, fast. When do, you want to do, when do you want to do the giveaway? I mean, I'll give the giveaway now. Okay. Um, just know that I've got a big lineup in store. Cheers. Um, dropping it at the beginning of February. Come on, give us a, give us a little uh, tip. Come on, who wait, you got? So like, I always get like a big Ameri like international art artist come over that's mm. kind of like, got a nostalgic feeling to them. Like Celine basically, Dion. Oh man, I'm not, I'm not old. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> um, but like basically someone they've grown up to and it's like, strawberries and cream is all about feeling good and being happy and the guy I've got to headline this year is going to have some of your happy memories, happy, happiest memories, memories growing up from the pre-club era. So, um, yeah, it's not one to miss and he's still making music today. So, so you got four VIP tickets for the listeners. Yes. You yeah, are yeah, yeah. G, Chris, man. So I think <laughs> how we're going to do it, I think we've decided to do... How, when is that? When are you releasing the lineup? Uh, first week of Feb. First week of Feb. Okay, cool. What on the same day? Yeah. Or I tell you what we do. Um, That's a good idea. Yes. We will. Le let's let's let Yasmin <laughs> do it because she's much better at organising things than <laughs> I am. Okay, cool. Sweet. But you heard it here first. Strawberries and cream. Chris Jammer. Four VIP tickets. We're gonna think of a little thing. You have to send your emails. You know, saying guys. But yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. mate. Easy. Pleasure to have you. Thanks so much for having me, bro. Sweet guys. Love you.